Jesus Christ is risen today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. The gift of peace is the Lord's gift in the power of his resurrection. On this day, we gather in word and sacrament as we hear the Emmaus story, the Lord with us in these sacred ways. It's good to be together this morning. Let us continue in Easter faith as we call to mind our sins, knowing God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kitty.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you, about the patriarch David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that you may worthily and well proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father and the Son. Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
glory to the Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they, appointed, as they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saved. The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. What's the background of these words of the disciples on the way to Emmaus in Luke's Gospel? 
the disciples are disappointed, unable to understand the recent events. These disciples say that Jesus was a prophet, mighty in deed and word. They were hoping that he would be the redeemer of Israel. Then the rulers killed him in a violent way. The Romans used the cross to show what would happen to troublemakers. The expectation of a political messiah will show up again soon when the disciples ask the risen Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? The disciples are preoccupied with these events. And that preoccupation no doubt contributes to their not recognizing the Lord in his risen body. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus had said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall seek God. These disciples don't recognize the risen Lord because their hearts aren't set on seeing God. But they're not without a sliver of hope because they do mention that it is now the third day. They remember Jesus had said that he would be killed and on the third day he would rise. From this seeming stranger, the disciples hear the words, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. If today, in the name of the church, someone heard the words, how foolish you are, would that person not get offended? Evidently, people like to take offense at correction. To the credit of these disciples, they keep listening. Why are they slow of heart to see God acting? In telling the story, St. Luke suggests they are slow to see what God is doing because they have not seen what God did in the past for his people. How does Jesus make himself known? First, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. After opening the scriptures, a table, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, as he did at the Last Supper. Luke tells us with that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is my favorite part of the story, Luke's choice of imagery. Their eyes were opened. Where else do we get that image in the Bible? Way back at the beginning, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Genesis tells us their eyes were opened. No choice of words in the Bible or even in translating the Bible, is an accident. Luke knew what he was doing. Better yet, Luke knew what Jesus was undoing. Jesus was undoing the power of sin. Jesus was restoring a broken relationship with God. This was a life-changing, saving event. Disciples were truly coming to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. The disciples had been given the gift of faith. During the COVID-19 crisis, some people seem to have taken time to acknowledge the gift of life itself. 
others seem especially angry by observing myself and discussing these observations with others. It seems to me that when we remain angry for a long time, we're often angry at ourselves. Usually we can distance ourselves from another person at whom we're angry in order to cool that anger, but one can't get away from oneself. Why get angry at ourselves in this time? We get angry at ourselves for being vulnerable, impatient with ourselves for not being superhuman. Facing human frailty seems to bring out the extremes of both humility and vanity. You wouldn't be watching this live stream if you weren't trying to avail yourself of God's grace and to open your eyes to God at work. We don't have Jesus with us in the same way the disciples did on the road to Emmaus, explaining the scriptures, but we do have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit inspired the writing of the scriptures, guided tradition in the way we understand scripture, and even guided tradition in the churches discerning which books were inspired and belong in the Bible. St. Luke implies that the disciples had trouble recognizing God at work in the events of Jesus' day because they didn't know the scriptures that related how God had worked in the past. Now is a good time to spend time reading the Bible. We understand scripture by scripture. Follow the references to other Bible verses and the footnotes of your Bible. Scripture interprets Scripture. And praying with Scripture might be the one type of prayer that becomes easier as we grow in faith. The more one grows in understanding the Scriptures, the more Scripture relates to everyday life share scripture in these days. Call someone who is isolated, someone whom you know will appreciate it. Read a psalm or proverb to them. Ask them what they'd like to hear. Scripture is best read aloud, proclaimed. And read with family. Children need to see mothers and fathers reading the Bible. Men don't neglect this biblical responsibility, this privilege of yours. I'm preaching to the choir, but set an example for others. Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? A commentary noted the excitement the disciples had on the road in sharing their experience. They hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles. What if we don't feel our hearts burning? Many of the doctors of the church, the great teachers on prayer, reported that prayer was usually dry. God, let your heart burn at the beginning, perhaps, and maybe occasionally thereafter. But what are burning hearts? In the biblical sense, the heart is the seat of action, not feeling. Feelings are fleeting. Faith grows in the action of sharing. In the epistle we heard from St. Peter, later in that same letter, Peter, he says, reverence Christ in your hearts. Always have your answer ready for people who ask for the reason for the hope you have, but give it with courtesy. Peter says that the task that Peter himself 
laid out for us in the Acts of the Apostles to evangelize, to preach Jesus Christ. That task will be orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. In trying times, people will see our hope and want to know about it. We're called on to tell our own story, to articulate our own relationship with Jesus Christ. And we have an example in the Gospel. How did Luke know what happened on the road to Emmaus? The two disciples must have told him the story, the story of their failures. They told us that they doubted, that Jesus called them foolish and slow of heart. They told us they didn't even recognize him until he opened their eyes. And Jesus used that story to bring glory to God. As disciples, we ask the Lord to open our eyes to him. Through the eyes of faith, we profess together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like David, we abide in confidence in the Lord, for we trust that God will never abandon us. Therefore, we address God with our needs and the needs of all. For the church, that like the early disciples, we may testify sincerely to Christ's power over sin and death and his promise of salvation to all humanity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and farm workers who plant the seeds and tend the seedlings that will grow and bear fruit that will nourish and delight us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathered here today, that we may strive to recognize Jesus in those we encounter on our journeys. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our families, neighborhoods, and workplaces who are frightened, damn it, that 
they may feel the Lord's tender presence. each of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the elderly, especially those on our bulletin prayer list, that they may feel the healing presence of the Spirit in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all in our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and love, help us to spread your mercy and love to all those we meet. Hear the prayers we make to you today and grant them, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our 
salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Bishop Kopaz wants to thank all of you for your patience during this time we've been asked to observe shelter in place and social distancing. Based on the current situation and protocol, starting next weekend, the weekend of May 2nd and 3rd, the diocese will be once again allowing priests to offer the Sacrament of Reconciliation with certain safeguards. If you'll follow the Cathedral Facebook page, and for those of you in other parishes, uh, your own parish will be making announcements, as we will hear, scheduling the Sacrament of Reconciliation again. Once again, thank you for your patience and understanding. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we thank Father. Matthew for that announcement, for that uh, important good news as we seek slowly and carefully to begin again our sacramental life in the church with the sacrament of reconciliation only at this time. We are certainly attentive to laying the groundwork for when it becomes uh, much more appropriate and doable to begin to offer the Mass, the Eucharist, in public fashion again, uh, respecting and following all of the uh, norms that we are becoming so familiar with. But the Sacrament of Reconciliation can be celebrated, and that will be a source of great joy, healing, hope, and peace for many. So we look forward uh, for that opportunity of grace and life as a church. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.